Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, please take a seat if you'd like or, or uh, stand. Chuck, I'm going to be yelling, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm Jim Lawrence, mayor of the uh, city of Marshalltown. And uh, Is that better? Okay. Uh, again, I'm Jim Lorenz, Mayor of the City of Marshtown. I want to thank you all for uh, coming out today and uh, making this uh, small adjustment in the location for the uh, what we think is a reason to celebrate. Um, this is a uh, this is a great project uh, that that we're celebrating. And I, I think one of the couple of the special things about it is uh, uh, the fact that it's gone beyond just a, uh, a park, uh, probably one of the most heavily utilized parks in uh, the 25 parks that we have in the system here in Marshalltown. Uh, but it, it's, it's different because it's been expanding beyond just a park place to have a picnic. Uh, it's expanding beyond the uh, playground area uh, to uh, really a, a, a visitation point, a, a place to be. And uh, Karen Gregory over at uh, Martha Ellen Ty uh, Foundation frequently talks about what makes Marshalltown different, what makes Marshalltown special. And one of the things she always points to is collaboration. And uh, that's simply a matter of people working together. This project is, a, is just a prime example of a number of elements in the community coming together, get together uh, to make an improvement in uh, one of those uh, quality of life features for, uh, for Marshalltown. Uh, and I know is going to run through all of the groups and individuals uh, that had played a part in this a little later. Uh, but I, I, uh, I want to especially recognize uh, the Martha Ellen Tai Foundation and mention them because of just the number of projects in which they are involved, uh, and uh, particularly those involving quality of life issues in Marshalltown. The other thing I wanted to mention, uh, and one of the reasons that I'm glad we're having this uh, celebration here uh, in the Coliseum, is that this is also uh, a project which, uh, which we're going to be starting on in, in uh, hopefully in uh, the near future. Uh, this building, the Megaton Park, they're kind of like people uh, that you know, as we get older, we need sometimes a little refreshing, uh, a little refurbishment. Uh, uh, we get tired and uh, need rejuvenation, and that's what's happened at the Megaton Gen Park. Uh, and uh, with the new equipment there, uh, with that fantastic children's garden, uh, and and the. The picket fence that was all done by uh, by young people here in Marshalltown, uh, it's getting a ref refurbishment. And that's what we want to do with this facility also. So at some time in the future, we're going to have another celebration in this facility, uh, a celebration to, uh, to recognize the uh, rebirth of uh, the Memorial Coliseum here. So uh, thank you for coming to, uh, to this event this afternoon. And Anne, with that, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Well, I just want to say thank you all for coming today. Um, this is for our Mega 10 ribbon cutting and our Park and Rec advisory, or our Park and Rec master plan kickoff event. 
I just want to say we've had a glorious showing of support for the Mega 10 Park upgrade with almost 100 donors to make this project a success. From in-kind services such as painting and landscaping to large monetary donations. Each donation has helped us to reach our goal. And if you'll bear with me for a second, I'm just going to quickly read through the list of all the donors, and hopefully I've got everybody here. The Martha Ellen Ty Foundation, Mega 10 Board, Marshalltown Community Foundation, Ann Kaiser Trust, Assistance League, JBS, UFCW, Mechdyne, Fisher Controls, Alliant Energy, Ladehoff Landscaping, ICAP, Lennox Industries, Diamond Vogel Paint, K Casey's, Clap Saddle and Garber, Fawn and Nord Team, the Iowa Valley Bicycle Club, Marshalltown Noon Kiwanis, PM Kiwanis, and Matins Kiwanis, Midland Concrete Products, Meskwaki Bingo Casino Hotel, Gervich and Sons, Spawn and Rose, Convention and Visitor Bureau, Members First, Morning Optimists, American Legion Auxiliary, Bowman and Miller, Chamber of Commerce, the National Association of Retired and Veteran Railway Employees. Evening Lions, the Iowa Valley Leadership Class of 2017, hey hey, McFarland Clinic, Mitchell Family Funeral Home, Shomo Madsen Insurance, Taco John's, UAW, ADK, GNB Bank, Bruin Manufacturing, United Bank and Trust, The Vet, Farmer Savings Bank, Marshalltown Company, Alan Amanda Akala, Janelle and Joe Carter, the Class of 1981, John and Sue Fink, Joel, Joel and Sharon Greer, Leona Huffaker, Jessica Kinzer, Tammy Lichtenberg, Sue Martin, Reagan Mazur, Terry and Becky Metz, Alberta Myers, Jason and Lynn Oberding, Bonnie Pappas, Conan and Kelly Schwartzoff, Stephen Ann Selness, Theron and Connie Schutte, Juliet Walters, Iowa River Hospice, Center Associates, Ward Miller, Don Blin Page Harvey, Dr. Clark, Keith and Mary Bloomquist, Deborah Ruder and family, Randy and Andy Wetmore, Carter Strand, Nicole Holman, Rod and Val Ruff, Joe and Peggy Hannum, Dennis and Heidi Drager, Colin and Ronan Ham, and Conrad DeJardin. And I hope that I got everybody in that list. Um, in addition, I would personally like to thank the 2017 Iowa Valley Leadership Class for fundraising, marketing, and agreeing to take on a project of this size. The class of 2018 will sure have their work cut out for them. And I would personally like to thank my staff, Kristen Titus, who designed um, the Children's Discovery Garden, Brad Weave, Kelly Smith, Phil Bull, John Lechner, be Becky Badkey, and Jenny Hart. Um, this group of people worked on Mega 10 day in and day out, even when we were overloaded with the magnitude of what we needed to accomplish. Everyone pulled together to make this project a success. Thanks again to everyone. I really believe we met our goal of making Mega 10 a destination and showplace park for Marshalltown. And I would like... <laughs> I would like to ask Mike Schlesinger to come up next, please. Uh, I'm here representing the Mega 10 board. And for those of you who don't know what Mega 10 actually stands for, uh, Mega 10 is the Marshall Town Economic Growth Association, and the 10 is significant in that we hope to make Marshall Town a perfect 10. This project is uh, going a long ways in that effort. Over the last 28 years, uh, Mega 10 has collaborated with individuals, businesses, and uh, organizations, and raised one and a half million dollars for various community projects. Uh, this is one of our signature projects, the Mega 10 Park that was begun several years ago and now with this addition, it is a uh, signature uh, destination place for Marshalltown. During the 28 years, uh, none of that could have been done without the contribution of businesses, individuals, and organizations, such as many of the people who are here right now. So we appreciate all of the uh, help. Uh, if you are not a member of Mega 10, it doesn't cost a lot. It's a dollar, dollar a week, $52 a year. All of that money goes to public improvement projects. Uh, there are no paid staff members, as the board is all volunteer. So I'd encourage any of you who uh, wish to help donate and make projects such as this as a reality to uh, join Mega 10. 
Uh, thank you for the Iowa Valley leadership uh, effort on this and Martha Ellen Tye Foundation and all of you that uh, contributed uh, both businesses and individuals alike. Uh, we appreciate it very much and we have something for which Marshalltown can be very proud of. Thank you. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom Laws. I'm the union president for the National Association of Retired and Veteran Railroads Employees, or NAR for short. Or you could say I got railroaded into this position. I would like to personally thank you all for being here as we dedicate the new playground equipment and repainting of the Capoose CNW 10957 in the Mega 10 part. In the course of repainting, we had 12 retirees and one retiree's wife helping in this project. These 12 railroaders ranged in age from 61 to 75 with the total years on the railroad, just a little over 450 years of seniority. We'd like to th thank the following Marshalltown businesses for their donations. Strands Paint for all the paint and supplies. Thompson's True Value for repairing the screens on the window. And sig Signal Sign, I mean Sign Creation for making the wonderful Northwestern and flag decals for the caboose. Let's give these businesses a big hand for this, pride in, for their pride in Marshalltown, and thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, like Ann said, my name is Casey Byers. I'm a landscape architect with Bolton and Mink. Uh, we are going to be working with the City of Marshalltown Parks and Rec Department on the 2018-2028 Strategic Master Plan. Uh, the purpose of our event tonight is really just to kick off the planning process and introduce uh, our team to the community as well as some of the different uh, public outreach opportunities that we have in place throughout the planning process. Uh, some of the goals uh, about the project, they're listed on the boards over there, but really the goal of this project is to come up with a document that outlines improvements uh, to parks, trails, recreational opportunities within Marshalltown for the next 10 years and beyond. Uh, we really want to you know, learn from the community what is important to Marshalltown and what recreation amenities are really missing and what uh, the city can do to improve existing structures uh, and existing facilities. Uh, so tonight you'll see we got a, some various boards over here uh, as well as some other things. Um, on the table we have some comment boxes which are actually going to be placed along trails and in parks uh, throughout the city. Uh, those are going to have comment cards and pencils in them and it's really just to try to engage uh, park users and trail users when they're actually uh, at these facilities. Uh, we have an online survey uh, which is up and running. Uh, I've seen a few responses already today and uh, that can be accessed. Um, there's a QR code actually on some of our boards uh, that you can scan and that'll take you to a link. Uh, there will also be a link which is on our uh, project Facebook page which is also up and running. Uh, so we'll be posting periodic updates, meeting events, um, different opportunities for outreach, things like that. Uh, but I, I strongly encourage you to spread the word and f fill out that survey as it really starts to help us learn uh, what's important to the city and uh, what recreation needs are, are, are here in the, in the community. Um, we also have uh, just some precedent imagery down on the end. 
this is by no means uh, proposed elements uh, for the city of Marshalltown, but it's really just to start generating ideas and kind of get that, that side of the brain uh, thinking about what possibilities uh, there are when it relates to recreational amenities. Uh, we also have uh, a, the existing parks plan, which is actually produced part of the 2012 comprehensive plan. And so if that might help kind of generate some ideas about, you know, this is, this is where I like to go, or, you know, you can start a conversation with us about, you know, certain things that, that you know of or want to point out to us, and we can relate to it on a map. Um, the, uh, the different public uh, engagement opportunities are also listed on a board. We're going to be having uh, an open house uh, after we complete our inventory and analysis. We're going to do a kind of a park tour, uh, which could be a kind of a walking slash cycling event where we actually uh, take the participants and we, we go and show you know, some of these improvements or some of these, uh, these items actually in the parks themselves and point out uh, different site constraints and opportunities actually in uh, the actual park. So it could be a, a good event to get people out and uh, recreate together and just kind of create that different opportunity for the outreach. Um, there's also on there just kind of a list of the process of where we're at. Uh, we are very early on in this, this process. We're really, this is our, our first public meeting. We're just kicking off this project and there's um, a whole list of different tasks and the kind of the structure of our planning process. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to grab me or um, Jim or Shannon over here. We all got name tags on um, and talk to us. But really, this is just a opportunity to interact with us and ask us questions about recreation and uh, and uh, the parks and different opportunities that exist and we're uh, we're happy to answer any questions you have that's it so please so please help yourself to some cookies and lemonade and we have some mega 10 pins as well and then just you're free to look around at the boards and ask any questions to the consultants or anybody else so we really thank you for coming today really appreciate it Justin Allen, I go by Allen, military background. I grew up uh, close to Des Moines, pretty much on the south side of Des Moines in a little town called Carlisle. It's home of the Septuplets, that's what everybody knows it for. Not a, not a big town, but I always like to hang out in Des Moines. I always see the police driving around. I think that'd be a fun job. So, went to college, got out of college, decided I didn't want a real world job yet, so I signed up for the military to be a military police officer which I used as a stepping stone to become a police officer. I'm still in the military going on 12 years and I've been a Marshalltown police officer for five since August 2012. One, I like the excitement and two, I, even on my nights off I still stay up really late. So I just can't help it, my, my body, that's how my internal clock is. I think it's probably set on like mountain or western time. <laughs> Somebody got to do it. You know, it's, it's the facts that are the most important. My opinion is irrelevant. But the only thing that will pertain to that is usually you can see there's patterns of behavior in individuals. Just if you're looking at somebody and you start getting like antsy feet and looking around, that's, that's probably going to run. And that's just through experience that you. So then that's when you kind of put up a little flag, like he's probably going to take off running soon. So. But that's something you had to learn. Correct. And that's through experience, so they don't teach you that. Yeah. They'll give you some pointers, but then it's just like with anything, unless you have that, for me, the practical application of it, unless I see it firsthand or I do it myself, then it's just you telling me how it works, and I'm like, oh, okay. But then when you see how it works, you're like, all right, now I understand it. Now it comes full circle. So Policing now is based on community policing, getting out to know the public, the general public, so the general public know who you are. And it's not just like, oh no, there goes the police. It's like, hey, that's the officer so-and-so. Because when you have that relationship with the public, it's easier to work hand in hand. Because the general public will begin, then become your eyes and ears. I, I can't be everywhere at once as much as I try to be. It's impossible. 
But the more eyes and ears we have out there helping us to keep the community safe, the easier it is for us to do our job. So that's a big thing with community policing. I used to work with full-time Army for uh, up at Mason City. I was an actual police officer, but I worked with them every day. And it was, it's essentially almost like a parallel community. They're about the same size, the same demographic. And it's, they're really, from what I last knew, they were trying to focus on community policing as well. It seems like there's been a shift in the country for policing to focus really on the community because that's where it starts. So it's those that are getting affected by the crime and those that can help solve the crime, it's the community. That come about, you think, because of the police shootings? I think this is a shift prior to that drastic issue. But I believe with social media and everything, everybody has a voice, which everybody has a right to have a voice. But some people's voices are more biased and pinpoint and focused than others. And then it's just pretty much who can yell the loudest is the one that gets hurt. So I do as much as I can. I did the very first one, which was actually very, very What do you fun. think about that program? It's good. It really is. And then people, one, I like coffee, so that's helpful. And two, the, the community gets to actually meet and I, I wouldn't even say an officer, it's a person with a badge. It's just, you're meeting a cop, so it's just another person. I'm, I still have friends that aren't officers in the military. And I just talk with them like everybody else talks with their other friends. It's just a human being, so. So they should have called it coffee with a person with a badge? Yeah, I think cop is a <laughs> little more catchy. Yeah, <laughs> copy with uh, that guy that does that thing. <laughs> I'm Sergeant Rick Lang of the Marshalltown, Iowa Police Department. I want to take this time because we're getting a little uptick in, in the scams uh, that are scoring. Um, and what we're seeing is it's usually internet-based. Um, anytime you're trying to sell something over the internet, um, and I had the problem on Craigslist when I was selling something on my own. Uh, we just had a gentleman come in here earlier today that was uh, selling something on it on the new uh, sales thing is uh, let go and uh, usually what happens is you have an item for sale let's say you're trying to sell something for a thousand dollars you'll get an email usually or a text they don't like to start out with uh, talking uh, and they'll offer you a lot more than what you've already got out there uh, without even looking at whatever you're selling they just love it so much they're going to give you, example, they're going to give you a check for $1,500 or something you're trying to sell for 1000 And that's the first tip off that this is a scam. Um, the other one that goes with this is uh, absolutely assured that they're too busy and those, there's a lot of different excuses, but they're too busy for them to pick it up. So they'll have an agent work on picking that property up that they're buying. And all they are going to ask you is to, once you get their check, is to give them three, four hundred dollars back from that check. And there's an excuse that goes with that usually, but keep a couple hundred extra, just send me four hundred dollars back. And what they're after is not what you're selling. It's, it's uh, in those, in these particular scams, it's not even your bank account so much. It's just real money because they're sending you a bogus check so it's going to bounce but sometimes their checks are good enough where it takes the bank about a week to figure out that this is a bad check and by that time they're hoping that you've decided to send them the money they asked for or in some cases people just say I've got this extra money I'm gonna go spend it and then like clockwork, a couple of days later, the bank contacts you and says, you're overdrawn because this $1,000 check bounced. So that's the scam that we're seeing um, right now. Um, there's also some out there, payday loans. Um, you have to be very careful on those because there's a lot of scammers that have their advertising up for a payday loan. And they send you the money but it bounces because they want some money back. Um, so basically back when I was working in detectives, we called it a split deposit scheme, where you deposit a, a large check and just take a couple hundred dollars off of that giant deposit. The 
giant deposit being fictitious, bogus. And that's where people get in trouble. Uh, they don't stay in communication with their banking institute to know that, in fact, that did or did not clear. But if you ever have something like that going on where somebody's offering you even more money than you're selling something for, stop communicating with them instantly. Just, and, and you can contact the local police department. Uh, the problem is uh, these people are working out of another nation usually, either India, Nigeria, or the two big ones. Uh, and it's a pretty tough case to crack. Um, there has been arrests made um, by federal, you know, FBI type thing. Uh, but for a local department uh, to make a case on that, that it's uh, in Nigeria basically, is pretty tough. What about cases where you said they send out a, another agent to either pick up the item and give them the check? Yeah, that agent never shows up. Um, they mail you the check or they, they send it in an email um, or Instagram. Um, I had one sent by U.S. Postal. As far as I know it was, I'm still following up with the Postal Service on that one, but it came when it appeared to be uh, certified uh, through the U.S. Postal Service in one of their cardboard envelopes, and it looked like it's, they spent $23 to send this bogus check. Uh, we do work very well with uh, postal inspectors, and we have throughout my 26-year career here. Um, I've always had a lot of confidence in them. And, and they're fun to work with too. They're great people. So I will be contacting them this week on another case just like that because I think it went through the U.S. mail. So is there a way to prosecute these people? Um, our best shot is when they use the U.S. mail because the postal inspectors have a lot more resources and a far farther reach and they have a, a larger database on, on these scams. You'll also get calls on your cell phone that look like they've come from our area code, but they're, you know, you want a free trip because you spent this time in a resort with us and they're trying to sell you something. Um, those are just numbers that they randomly can generate on their end to make it look like they're local. And, and the uh, Iowa State Attorney General is working on that where they have the uh, computerized automatic dialers and that's why they're calling your phone. Even if it's unlisted, you're getting these phone calls. Um, I get them and I, I guard my, my cell phone number especially uh, pretty tightly um, and I still get these phone calls pretty regularly. My name is Pat Thompson. I'm public health nurse from Marshall County, and I'm glad to be on the show today. We're going to be talking about weather, and as you know, it's been hotter than heck, and it doesn't look like it's going to be improving at all. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, how you can protect yourself in the heat. And one of the things you need to do is make sure that you get into air conditioning. You know, in the old days, we thought fans were enough, but we really do know that if you get your body into air conditioning several times a day, or excuse me, several hours out of every day, that is better for your whole body. So it's recommended that you, even if you don't have air conditioning in your home, go, go to the library, the mall, a grocery store, and just walk around and relax and cool off a little bit, okay? If you're one of those people that has to work outside in the bad weather, you know, hot weather is bad weather to me, and where it's unsafe, especially with our high hum humidity, and it really is unsafe when the humidity is so high, uh, we want you to make sure you wear uh, loose, light-colored clothing and hats to protect your, you know, that actually does keep your head cooler even though it may not feel like that. Make sure you wear sunblock so that you don't get a sunburn because sun exposure and sunburns actually uh, affect the temperature control of your skin so it, it's something that you really need to uh, not get a sunburn because you're just not going to be able to control your temperatures so well. Another thing you need to be concerned about is young people and the very old and, and as I'm getting older that doesn't seem so far away but it happens to all of us and our bodies just don't have as good of a temperature, temperature control mechanism. Does that make sense? That we need to really take care of ourselves and we need to watch out for are elderly because they really can't sense when it's too hot and they're usually cold even when the rest of us are just thinking it's just miserably hot outside so we need to make sure that they um, have air conditioning or access to cool air 
as much as I can. Now yesterday um, I was at the mall and I was doing blood pressures for the Senior ex Expo and that was a really good experience for me and I asked people if they had air conditioning and people said yes and then finally it dawned on me and I need to ask do you turn it on? So when you turn the air conditioning on that's actually something that you could do to help control the humidity in your house and that would help you stay cooler. You don't have to make it cold. It doesn't have to be like the grocery store where they have lots of people going in and out the doors. Just keep yourself so your humidity is down and that'll help take better care of you. And then finally, you know, we need to think about, well, our children, of course, um, we, you know, we need to have shade for them if they're outside, you know, water, um, water uh, features if that's, if that's what we want for them to be a little bit cool and they're outside that type of thing with uh, with sunblock and um, and also it's important not to really go outside and work and play in extreme temperatures around the noon hour you know from say 11 to, to 4 when it's the hottest you know do it in other parts of the day when it's the coolest I talked to a gentleman that actually did his some work outside early in the morning so it was cooler and it was much more comfortable and that was his plan for the next day. So he knew how to do it right and he was at the mall in the afternoon cooling off so that was good. Um, and also think about your pets. Our pets do not belong in cars this time of year. We know we love to take them for rides and they they don't have a sense of that they shouldn't go you know. So our responsibility is to keep them at home and not in our hot cars because they just it, the temperature goes up so fast, I think it's 118 degrees in so many minutes, you know, I mean, it's not immediate 118, but it's, it's a killing temperature. So we need to keep, we need, we're the ones that are taking care of them and we need to provide the best care that we can. So stay cool, um, remember to get in air conditioning if you can, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. Drink plenty of fluids, wide brimmed hat, like loose clothing, uh, Avoid a sunburn and drink plenty of fluids and uh, we'll see you next time.